Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And this world is getting darker by the day, it seems. So get out your King James Bible, and we're going to start in Luke chapter 17. Um, this is going to be part three of the kingdom of God. And uh, we'll s see what happens. All right. Luke 17, verse 11. And it came to pass as he, Jesus, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, I don't know if you know it, but uh, leprosy is a horrible disease. Uh, your skin turns like paper white, and your fingers can just fall off. I mean, it's, it's terrible. The... Um, we had less than a dozen cases of leprosy in the entire United States in the 1950s. And they put them on an island quarantine in, uh, off the coast of Louisiana. Well, then we started having an influx of people from Haiti into Florida. Now, Haiti is where voodoo originated from, or maybe you could say became popular from and zombies zombies and voodoo are from haiti or quite prevalent i should say well when we started getting tons of these haitians coming to florida there were more cases of leprosy in just miami dade county than there was in the entire united states in the 1950s so so much for uh, quarantine. You know, when you have open borders, um, you don't have quarantine of communicable diseases. So, so there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now, that word master is the same word that they translate as rabbi. Rabbi means master. I know people will try to tell you it means teacher, but no, wrong, doesn't, means master. That's why Jesus said, call no man your master, or, well, on earth anyways. Well, in Matthew 23, 6, it says, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the ma markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Now this is Jesus speaking. Verse 8, But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. See, it tells you right there, but be not ye called rabbi, for one is your ma for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Ah, Christ is our master. Hmm. Verse nine, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Wow. So, what are the uh, people that hang out in the sin of Gog? call themselves rabbi and what are the the vatican followers call themselves father don't they you go into the confessional and say forgive me father for i have sinned well no kidding uh, so luke 17 13 and they lifted up their voices and said jesus master have mercy on us and when he saw them he said unto them Go show yourselves unto the priests. 
And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now, why would he tell them to go to the priests? Well, if you read the book of Leviticus, I think it's Leviticus, the um, priests in the temple were the ones who would examine people to see whether or not they had been cleansed of leprosy and if they were still contagious. So, and you know, back in the old days when I was a kid, if people had a communicable disease, they did quarantine. The Bible taught quarantine. The, the people with uh, diseases were told to quarantine themselves. They were kicked out of the uh, population centers and were set apart until they were, you know, disease-free. Well, that's what the uh, priests would do. The priests would examine the people, see if they still had leprosy or what have you. And uh, if they were considered clean, they'd let them back into the congregation. But if they weren't, they had to say, stay separated. Quarantine. Quarantine's in the Bible, people. And we practiced that back in the 50s in the United States. But, uh, you know, it seems every year we get further and further away from the Bible and scriptures and the Lord. Every year the country's get further away. So, Jesus said, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So he was probably one of those uh, Jeremiah 3 and verse 8 uh, Israelites that lived in Samaria, one of those divorced of Israel, and he gave Christ, thanks to Christ for healing. Only one out of the ten. Uh, what was uh, the tenth? A tithe, remember? So out of ten people, only one came back to give thanks to Christ. A tithe. Wow. Verse 17, And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, All right, so, when he was demanded of the Pharisees, and who are the Pharisees? They were the, um, the, the Pharisees today are modern day Jews. They don't call themselves by Pharisees anymore, but they are modern day Jews. So he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. So here it is, the Pharisees are asking Jesus when the kingdom of God should come. He answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Ah. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Ah. The kingdom of God is within you? Huh. Very interesting. Now, does this tie in with it in John chapter 3? I believe it does. Now, it's just my opinion. Other people have other opinions. You know, that's fine. I mean, you know, uh, the disciples asked Jesus, well, you know, when are you going to come back? And he said, well, you know, I'm paraphrasing. You know, he's like, um, he didn't know, and the angels in heaven didn't know, and uh, only the Father knew when he would send his son to go get his bride. Now, if there's things that Jesus doesn't know, you better believe there are lots of things that I sure don't know. So, so all these people that pick dates uh, when Christ is going to return, I, I, and I'm not talking about saying, well, you know, maybe Christ will come back in 2028. 20, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about somebody that says, oh, he's going to come April 1st, uh, 2020. Well, yeah, April Fool's Day, people, April 1st, right? 
Oh, and by the way, uh, the Bible commanded false prophets to be put to death. So uh, when somebody picked a day that Christ should return and he doesn't, guess what? Yeah. And that's how you get rid of false prophets. You follow the word of God, but uh, we don't believe that anymore. So, all right, John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. See, that proves you right there. The Pharisees are Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. I'm sure you've all, all everybody's heard this story many, many, many times, but let's bear with me. There came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So Nicodemus, he's, he's paying attention here. Verse 3, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Hmm. Okay. So I got to be born again. Hmm. But my mom's dead. How can that, how can I be born again? My mom is, she died last year, you know. Um, oh, well, that's, that's the Bob translation. So verse four, Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, there's people that will tell you that, you know, except a man be born of water and the Spirit, uh, you know, they're talking about when they're getting born of the, you know, water, that they're talking about water baptism. And that's quite possible, you know. But have you ever heard of amniotic fluid? Uh, a baby, when it's in its mother's womb, is covered in a sack filled with water. The baby doesn't breathe because it's got the umbilical cord that is the mother's lungs are supplying the baby with all the oxygen that it needs to survive. And that's why they smack the baby when it comes out of uh, the mother's uh, womb. You know, they smack the baby and when they cut the umbilical cord, because, hey, baby's got to breathe on its own, right? Um, but that's kind of how I look at it. You know, you have a physical birth, and then you have a spiritual, have to have a spiritual birth. So he says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into, wait for it, the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, the word spirit and the word wind comes from the same Greek word, pneuma. That's where you get the, um, the word for pneumatic tools, air tools. It's same word, pneuma. And, uh, you know, just, it's similar in Hebrew, too, uh, where God took Adam and formed him in the ground and breathed into him the breath of life. You know, it's, there's a lot of Greek words uh, that the United, you know, English uses. A lot of them, especially medical words. So, when it talks about the wind blowing and the spirit, same word, same root word, so. So Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify 
that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Now listen carefully. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. You see, we're not, I, I can't go up to heaven I, by my own accord. No, and neither can you. But the Bible here says, but he that came down from heaven. See, before Christ was born in the flesh, he was in heaven. It says, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So, how could Jesus be a mere man if he came down from heaven? Somebody explain that to me, please. I can't understand how Christ could come down from heaven if he was a mere mortal man. You know, there's a reason why the virgin birth. There's a reason for that. Now, uh, somebody pointed this out to me, and I thought, wow, that was really interesting. When you read the genealogy of Joseph, Joseph was of the tribe of Judah, which was the king tribe, uh, actually from the line of King David, you know, David and Goliath. But when you read Mary's genealogy, guess what? She was from the tribe of Levi. You know, Aaron and Moses, they were Levites. They were of the priest tribe. Uh, the tribe of Judah was the, the, uh, law, the kings. The kings upheld the civil laws. You know, thou, you know, thou shall not kill. Whereas the priests were the ones that would do the uh, temple sacrifices. Um, before the temple, there was the tabernacle. And, uh, you know, Mary was of the tribe of Levi, the priests. They were the ones that served God. Well, guess what? Mary carried the tabernacle of God. Think about that. Christ is Christ was the basically the tabernacle, the sacrifice that would uh, cover our sins to reconcile us back to God. I mean, that's a whole study in itself, you know? So, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, past tense. Think about it, people. God loved the world that he created. I don't think he loves the world that became corrupted with the fall of Eve and Adam in Genesis 3. I don't think that's the world he loves. No. He wants to reconcile us in this corruption, our corrupt flesh, our, this corrupt world, and bring us into his kingdom, which was similar to what the earth was before the fall. You know, in the garden, they didn't have to till the ground. Everything grew of itself. I mean, they might have cut some fruit down and stuff. You know, they might have tended the garden, but but they didn't have to hoe the weeds. And, and you know, I mean, that was that was a lot of work, you know. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Praise God for that. But he that believeth not is condemned already. 
All those that don't believe are condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Why does it say only begotten Son of God? Only begotten Son of God. Because Christ was special. One time deal. Okay, we don't become sons of God until we are born of the Spirit. And then, you know, so what can I tell you? Verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Wow. All right, let's go back to Luke 17. So the Pharisees asked him when the kingdom of God should come, and he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Verse 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that cometh out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. The, the people, the sky is going to light up. I mean, you know, nobody's going to miss that unless they're blind, okay? Verse 25. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah... That's the Greek rendering of Noah. So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat. They drank. They bought. They sold. They planted. They building. Uh, they builded, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. But the same day that Lot went out from San Francisco, oh, it rained fire and brimstone. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I've read that verse already. Verse 30. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Wow. In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, like, let him likewise not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Uh, why does he mention remember Lot's wife? Uh, this is the second shortest verse in the Bible. The shortest verse in the Bible is uh, Jesus wept. And that has reference to, uh, let's see, Mary and Martha's... Uh, brother Lazarus was uh, resurrected so just a little trivia there somebody asked you who the two shortest verses in the Bible Jesus wept, wept and remember Lot's wife so why remember Lot's wife well she went with Lot and, and the angels grabbed him by the hand and yanked him out of Sodom and Gomorrah right and uh, she turned back to look and she missed her uh her uh, convection oven and her microwave oven and her gas stove, I guess. And, um, you know, she missed her fine furniture in her house and her uh, feather bed, I guess. I, I don't know. So she turned back with longing in her eyes, I'm sure. You know, the Bible says she turned into a pillar of salt. I don't know. That's kind of how I look at it. Not that I have all the truth. No. Verse 33. 
Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Well, he's talking about uh, those that lose their life for the gospel's sake, right? Verse 34. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither all will the eagles be gathered together. Now, there's a, a, a vulture that's actually called an eagle vulture. Uh, now, everybody, you go to any Baptist church, and they'll tell you that, well, there's going to be two men in the field, uh, two men in the bed, and two women in the field. One's going to be taken, and the other's left. And they'll tell you, Oh, yeah, pre-trib rapture, we're, we're going to be the ones taken. Well, I don't know about you, but I want to be left. I mean, think about it. It says, as it was in the days of Noah. Well, at the end of the flood, who was taken and who was left? The wicked were taken in the flood and drowned, and Noah was left behind. Who was left behind in the days of Lot? Lot was. The Sodomites were, were taken and burned in fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed. <laughs> so, you know, they, they, they turn it around and make it say the opposite of, of you know, they, they make it turn, they turn it into the opposite of what it says. I want to be left behind. You know, Jesus said that the, uh, the meek shall inherit the earth. So, what can I tell you? All right, let's take a look. Uh, in Mark 8, 35, it say, uh, Jesus said, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. Yeah, you might lose your physical life, but you're going to save your spiritual life, your soul and spirit. So, what can I tell you? All right, let's go to Acts chapter 14. Uh, we're going to skip Luke because uh, Matthew and Mark uh, covered a lot of the same material, and there's no reason to keep reading it again. Uh, let's see, Acts chapter 14, verse 1. And it came to pass in Iconium, uh, that's a Greek territory, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, and so spake the, that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles, same word as nations, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, afflict, affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they spoke they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Boy, it's pretty hard to, you know, when people are doing miracles, uh, saying that this is the power of God, it's pretty hard to uh, you know, explain it away, right? Verse four. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and of the Jews with their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them, uh, they were ware of it, and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel." 
And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly hoped, beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stamp, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. When the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, The gods, plural, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Have you ever heard of Jupiter and Mercury? Yeah, they named the planets after uh, Greek gods. I didn't name them, but, uh, you know, the astronomers, that's what they named them, right? Verse 13. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen, oxen and garlands into the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people. So here it is, they're getting ready to, to do sacrifices uh, to Paul and Barnabas like they're gods. And what, what does Paul and them say? Well, verse 14, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they rent their clothes and ran among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities. What is a vanity? Something that's worthless. That ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Wow. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel of that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, trouble, that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had, had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Ah, I love it. Acts chapter 19. And it came to pass, verse 1, and it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Now John's baptism was repentance. Uh, verse 4. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. You're going to find out when you're reading the Bible, certain numbers pop up over and over and over. And 12 is one of those. Verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spake 
boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Yeah. Disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God, but when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. Tyrannus. And he continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now, when it says Asia here, uh, Greece is considered Asia Minor because it's on the continent of Asia. You know, when you think of Asia today, you're thinking Japan, Korea, China, Mongolia, you know. But did you notice Paul the Apostle to the Gentiles? He never went to China. He never went to Japan. He didn't go to India. And he didn't go to Sub-Sahara, Central Africa. Never went there. Where did Paul go? To the Gentiles. He went to Greece, Italy. Um, you know, that's, that's where he went. Asia Minor. So think about that. Paul never went to China. Didn't go to India, didn't go to uh, Central Africa, didn't go to the Congo or Ethiopia, to my knowledge, at least not that I ever read in the Bible. So, And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick hand, handkerchiefs and aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. You know, I wonder how many evil people in this world are possessed of evil spirits, devils, demons, whatever you want to call them. I don't know. I wonder. Then certain of the vagabond Jews... Ah, vagabond Jews. Where do we read about vagabond? All right, let's read about those vagabonds. Genesis chapter 4, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel thy brother? Hmm. Never ask a question that you don't already know the answer to when you're dealing with a, an evil person, right? Because you know they're going to lie to you. Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The blood of thy brother's, I'm sorry, the voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. In other words, Cain is never going to be a farmer. Never. You can till the ground all you want, but nothing, you know, the plant might grow, but it's not going to yield unto you any fruit. You know, you're not going to be able to eat anything that you plant with your hand in the ground, Cain. And I'm of the opinion that uh, this curse passed upon all his descendants, his children. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not thenceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond. There's that vagabond. Didn't we just read that in the book of Acts? Yeah. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Hmm. 
Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid. And I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that uh, everyone that findeth me shall slay me. Oh, yeah. So, what group of people do you know of that were vagabonds and fugitives and are never farmers? Huh. Think about that. Oh, 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 oh. I was just thinking of something. Um, by the way, people, there's a wonderful... I'm using that word sarcastically. There's a group over in the uh, Middle East, uh, Israelis, and they want you to go over there and plant a tree in honor of the Israeli state. Huh. Why don't... How come they don't plant that tree by their own hands? No, they want they want us to go over there and plant a tree. You know, plant a tree for Israel, they say. Huh, I wonder why that is. Uh, I don't know. Don't ask too many questions, Bob. You might not like the, uh, the answer. All right, let's go back to Acts 19. Uh, verse 13, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preacheth. In other words, they're trying to cast out these evil spirits by the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches by. And there were seven sons of one Shiva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks which dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Ah, here we go. Many of them also which used curious arts. They're talking about magic here, people. And many of them which used curious arts brought their books together, and burned them before all men. That's what you're supposed to do with evil books, books on magic and Satanism. You're supposed to burn them, just like they're going to be burned in the, uh, the fires of hell eventually. Not yet. It's not that time yet. Many of them also, which use curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it, 50,000 pieces of silver. Boy, I'd love to have 50,000 pieces of silver. I'd love to. I'd know what to do with it. But but I'm not a greedy person, so, yeah. Verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. All right. All right, let's read Acts chapter 20 and verse 17. Uh, we're talking about Paul here. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. All right. Uh, and when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Ah. Who was lying in wait? No. Oh. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, 
so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you the all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Listen carefully. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock. Yeah, you want to see uh, the grievous wolves? Just turn on TBN or the 700 Prophets of Baal Club. Uh, yeah. That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. All right. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 28. Uh, I guess uh, Paul was having problems with the uh, you-know-who, and uh, so he appealed unto Caesar because he was going to be tried, and he didn't want to be tried in the temple or the synagogue, so he appealed unto Caesar. And that was part of God's pro uh, plan, because he was going to go to Rome and preach to people there. So let's read uh, verse 20. For this cause, therefore, have I called you, have I called for you to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. See, he was a prisoner. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning this sect, what sect? The Christians. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified, testified that, uh, I'm sorry, and testified the kingdom of God, and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. Now, people, that's a that's a one long sermon there. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And they, when they agreed not among themselves, they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well, spake he said. Uh, uh, so they departed. After that, Paul had spoken one word. Well, spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, and Isaiah says Isaiah, saying. Go unto this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it therefore be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence 
and no man forbidding him. Oh, yeah. All right, in uh, Romans, the book of Romans. Well, that's what Paul did when he was in Rome. He penned the book of Romans. Ah, chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Ah, it's not meat or drink. But righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in, in uh, for he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God, and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things whereof, I'm sorry, wherewith one may edify another. All right, let's turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter six verse one. Uh, this is talking about churches having courts, deciding matters among believers. Okay? Uh, almost nobody does this today. Almost nobody. Uh, matter of fact, uh, myself and another believer uh, were attending a church, and we believed in the Israel uh, truth, and uh, they made all kinds of horrible accusations against us both and uh, kicked us out. Of course, they didn't give me the opportunity to, to speak among the, uh, the elders. They just wanted us out. Of course, the pastor, he wanted to be a dictator. And uh, I kind of, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't trust. Well, you can't, you can't reform Babylon. That's just the way it is. So, All right, 1 Corinthians 6, verse 1. Dear any of you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. In other words, are two believers going to sue each other in a court of law when the judge's name is Cohen or Rothberg or Silverstein or Goldberg or Cohen? Yeah, you're going to go before unbelievers? Verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? And if that's if I get to judge uh, my uh, angel, I'm going to have to uh, really thank him and and because boy, I tell you what, he kept me from dying many many times. And what an idiot I was! So. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you, no, not one, that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that be before the un believers. Now therefore, this is utterly a fault among you, because ye go to law one with another. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Why do ye not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, and that's sodomites, people, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Wow. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. 
All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? What's a harlot? A whore. We got a lot of harlots in America today. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of, a, of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two, he saith, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man commit, uh, doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen to that. All right, I think this is going to be the end of part three of the kingdom of God. Um, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world, in Jesus' precious name, amen.